Oh man. Okay. Uh, you guys, uh, let's uh, let's answer the question I probably get relatively. I mean, pretty often. I, I don't know, but is hotshot trucking like shipping wars? Obviously, there was this TV show a while back, probably a few years ago now. It was called Shipping Wars, and in that TV show, uh, I swear, that TV show was probably sponsored by U-Ship because that was the load board that they were using. And if anybody's in the trucking business or the transportation business, they know that U-Ship is a literal dumpster fire because U-Ship allows uh, carriers that aren't like vetted or whatever, they allow carriers without checking their insurance or if they have an MC number. So it's literally a mess on U-Ship and that's why the rates on U-Ship are so bad. But the, the premise of the show is you got carriers bidding against each other on this active load board, right? And it was a really interesting show to watch and a lot of people ask me if that show is like what I do. So I want, I want to kind of help you understand uh, how the trucking business is a little bit different than most other businesses, but also how the show uh, portrayed some of the things, right? So first and foremost, I'm gonna say like, if you go back and watch that show, there is so much unnecessary drama in it. It's, uh, it's frustrating, right? It absolutely is frustrating. And that, that it's probably done for TV, let's be honest, right? Because if there, if there was no drama, you kind of wouldn't really care about the show, right? So that's number one. Uh, way, too, way too much drama. Number two, guys, there is no active bidding load board like that. Those loads that they were bidding on, for to my understanding, you ship only did it for them. Literally just for the show. Uh, like those board, those loads would be bid on. Uh, the, but speaking of, so there is so the load board that I use truckstop.com and and some people say DAT I think truckstop has more hotshot freight than DAT but there's also other load boards like TQL a big brokerage has their own load board as well so um, you know but we're gonna get into that a little more but uh, but so anyways there is no active or the big load boards don't allow active bidding like that that's number one number two is if the load board allows active bidding, uh, or maybe the broker allows active bidding, he, there's no way they will tell you who bid cheaper. There's no way. So I know, like in in the in the vi in the videos or in the TV show, they would like bid, and then uh, the like they would cut to, oh, I, that person just bid less than me. Like, no, that's absolutely ridiculous. You don't know who underbids you, and you don't know by how much somebody underbids you. It's just a broker on the phone taking phone calls saying, hey, how much will you do it for? How much can you do it for? Or they say, hey, I have it for a thousand. Could you do it for, uh, you know, like a broker will take those calls to himself and then kind of figure out on his own. But he would never say, hey, that person that you know bid a hundred bucks cheaper than you. Also, the trucking business is so huge that you you can't even know. Like it's so hard to know another carrier unless it's literally you and your friend working with the same broker. Uh, like it's, uh, it's it, that's literally impossible. That TV show made it seem like the trucking freight market is super tiny and that everybody knows each other. Not the case. Uh, don't forget, there's like over half a million active MC members active motor carrier numbers over half a million so the likelihood of you knowing who you're bidding against very rare um so that was that's not true then moving on oh what oh gosh it was so frustrating when and the what so let's say the driver or some carrier the guy wins the, wins the load correct and he shows up to the load and i think i remember in one episode i think it was a young guy i believe his name was jared um he would always drive like a sprinter van or something uh, so I think one time he showed up to a load. I may be getting this, I may be remembering along, but he showed up and it was this big old drum set and the drum set wasn't packaged. Right. And so they had to go and package everything up to then fit into the, the, the thing doesn't happen. If I show up and it's not packaged, I sit there in my truck, twiddle my thumbs and wait. It, like it's very, very rare to do for a driver to do work super super rare now you but you're supposed to uh you're supposed to strap it down tarp it that's your responsibility but in no way shape or form are you pa packaging it because if it gets damaged in the packaging that's their fault not yours right but if you damage the load while it's with your strap that's your fault so that was also um they over overstated oh i think they made it seem like it was much more work than it possible than it was but now you might be wondering okay well what are like what things are like uh you know 
they covered a good amount of like videos. They had a lot of um, things about I think like um, rate per mile, things like that. Uh, very few of those things uh, were actually. I think a good chunk of them were COD, which that's not even how UShip works. UShip gets paid and then they pay you. Uh, so you ship is the middleman and sometimes they have got cash on delivery. So very, very rarely do you get cash on delivery in freight in cars. I did a video about it already. Often you get cash on delivery uh, for cars, but not in freight. Freight, usually you get paid from the company, which is called a, um, you get paid from a factoring company. They buy your invoices and pay you in advance for a small fee. They advance you your money for that invoice and they charge a small fee for that. So um, that's how that works. The big one though is the load boards, right? And what I want to say about the load board is, uh, like I said, truckstop.com is probably one of the more popular ones um, along with DAT, but I just think DAT has less uh, hotshot freight, right? Uh, so, but the load board really, I think is what sets the whole trucking industry apart. Unlike other businesses, you know, this isn't compared to like shipping wars, but this is, um, so unlike other businesses, the load board is, you essentially don't need customers, right? It, like that's how it works. So instead of you maybe opening a restaurant and thinking, hey, is there a market for um, some kind of, uh, I don't know, sushi French uh, fusion, if that's even a restaurant. <laughs> you know, like may, instead of you trying to figure out where you can get your customers, instead there's a load board. So all you have to do is provide, you know, your truck, your trailer, you as a driver and your insurance and an active motor carrier number. I mean, there's a couple, there's, that's an oversimplification, but there's a bunch of other little things. Uh, but it, essentially, if you provide those few things, you, you get access to the load board, right? And cheaper load boards like you ship, you don't even have to have insurance or an MC number. You just sign up and you go and you have access, right? So if you ship really cleaned up their act and, got rid of the people that don't have active insurance or an MC number, their prices would go up. They really would uh, because insurance is one of those really super expensive things. But the, uh, regardless, it's like if you provide those five things, all of a sudden you'll have access to the same freight that I'm hauling that I talk about in all of my videos, right? Because literally almost all my loads come from um, truckstop.com. And that's very, very different than most other businesses. Very different. Like, for example, maybe you open a towing company. I've had numerous calls from towing companies saying, hey, I'm done with towing and, you know, it's kind of similar, but you're hauling, you know, further instead of clo close by. And and towing is different because it's like, well, you open a towing business and it's like, sure, there's some insurance, but then you got to start marketing on Google. You got to start doing a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, you know, and like I mentioned, restaurants, it's like you open your restaurant, spend a ton of money and you don't even know if you're going to get customers. Um, what about some kind of online, you're doing social media business, right? Um, I thought about doing that still. How do you market your social media marketing business? I don't know. You're right. So it's like, it, it really is different in the fact that there's, there's just so much freight in the trucking business and you don't need to go get your own customers. You know, you just need to go in there and sign up for the load board. Once you get all your ducks in a row and you can start making money right away. And that's very, very different. Yeah, I mean, it's also very different that you have to have really expensive insurance that now I think more and more companies, more and more lawyers are now suing trucking companies because they know we have a million dollars to play with, right? They know for a fact that if you have an MC number on the side of your truck, well, now it's a DOT number only. Uh, you have to only require a DOT number for uh, the stickers. Uh, so now they know that if you have a DOT number on the side of your truck, they can sue you for a million dollars. Whereas the normal state minimum is usually like 50,000 bucks. And that's why you're seeing more and more, were you in a truck accident, you know, truck accident, call, whatever, right? You're seeing more and more of those billboards because they know we have at least a million dollars of insurance. And so they could sue for the minimum a million dollars. Now there's this thing called nuclear verdicts and that's any lawsuit that ended up paying out more than $10 million. And so I hope the insurance requirements don't go higher because that'll put more carriers out of the business because insurance already, uh, my insurance bill for the month was $4,711. I have three trucks, <laughs> three, three trucks. And it's $4,700 just for insurance a month. 
Okay. Now, so like, keep in mind, like, yes, there's pros and cons in the trucking business. Yes, it's very different because you have to go find customers like with a normal business. Uh, but keep in mind that you do have to be out on the road making money. And so, uh, and, and I think that sh the show uh, somewhat accurately did display that. A lot of those people like talked about or mentioned that you know they're they're not home, especially the young guy Jared. You know what I mean? He, I, I feel like he kind of lived in his van. <laughs> so, uh, so basically, the the premise is it's somewhat like the show, but somewhat uh, not. Which I guess that's like with any TV. Uh, but in reality, it's very very different than most other businesses because you don't have to go get your customers. You know, so it's like. That's kind of cool too. So anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think about this video. I was just talking on the phone with someone and you know, that kind of came up. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Peace.